We are one of the high burden countries in the region. Um, our case notification has increased up to about close to 30,000. Uh, not only that, uh, we have um, unfortunately had difficulty in, in case holding and, and getting our success rates up to where we want them to be or what is expected. What that means is that our success rate uh, ideally should be up around a target rate of 85% above, acor above according to the DOT strategy. But we've not been able to get it up beyond 60%, uh, mm. you know, all these years. Um, this is, we're talking almost a decade now. And, and, the, and, the, and the, the problem and challenge is that there's, there's a big number of, of our patients who come on treatment who are lost to follow up or who, who default. That's up to about 20% or more. Uh, and in certain settings, even further, uh, higher than that. Now, the challenge of that is, is of course, uh, a recipe for, for multi-drug resistant TB. Uh, and so we have um, ha had the problem and challenge of multi-drug resistant TB in Papua New Guinea. Um, we also have now the XDR TB uh, also in, in certain parts of our country, especially along the border that we share with Australia in our western province and also in the National Capital District. So uh, has been yes, yes. Uh, and so that's, that's a huge challenge for us. Um, and, and so the work has now been um, galvanized and, and an emergency response put in to, to push through to, you know, uh, curb this problem. And so the, the government um, has initiated a, an emergency response for the next 12 months. Uh, and we've targeted our three hotspot provinces that, that where we see the highest load of, of the TB, uh, MDR and XDR TB. And, and so that's going to go on for, for um, a whole 12 months. Um, with the support of all our partners and, and uh, especially DFAT, uh, with, with um, some of the um, uh, technical institutions like Bennett Institute and also um, Medicine Sun Frontier, MSF. Uh, and the provinces themselves uh, engaged in trying to, to help us deal with it. Now, the, the focus is to enable us to get through to, um, you know, get all our patients that have defaulted, find them and put them on treatment and, and, and uh, push through for a favorable outcome. So that's a hard lot of work uh, and, uh, of course, very expensive exercise uh, because MDR-TB is not a, a cheap option. So and, and so we've been um, uh, en encouraged, and since the review with the, the uh, world global team who have come in and, and looked at what we were doing, uh, whatever the recommendations they've given, we are now implementing that. And, and the, the biggest one is, of course, to ensure that we, we uh, improve our DOTS, DOTS uh, strategy. And, and so that's what we are working hard on, uh, especially with the drug sensitive TB patients. Uh, and, and so at this point in time in the country, we, we still don't have any centers of excellence. Uh, and so that's a big challenge for us. But within the 12 months, as we put in the, the support and help and, uh, and, and the focus, I, I am uh, hopeful that we will get the results we want to get, uh, which is a success rate up to the um, level that's expected uh, of 85% cure rate and 75% uh, case detection rate. We are implementing all the strategy that's, that's been, um, uh, all, all the recommendations of the review that was done uh, early, early last year. Uh, and that's, that's, um, th that uh, recommendation or those findings have been put into our strategy. 2015. So was, was it a joint coordination mission of the Ye Yes, yes. So they did the review, and then we, we, we a part of that uh, enabled us to put in the strategy 2015-2020. Uh, uh, yes, uh, and and um, that's also been used to put in the concept note to Global Fund. So the Global Fund uh, financing has come in. That's about um, close to. Um, 21 million or so, uh, and in the next three years, we will be able to, um, um, the, the, 
implement part of the uh, strategy. Uh, and, and, and the key part of the strategy is, is to, to enable us to, to reach the, the all the uh, BMUs uh, that, that, are, that are the source of all our, you know, uh, defaults and, and, and uh, the, the results that we are not, not, not seeing. This is where uh, tw 28 of our BMUs, or, or sorry, 30 of our BMUs, uh, where, where 80 to 90 percent of our problem is. And so that's part of the strategy. We're targeting those. So if we get, get to get them to, to, to um, uh, accurate rate and, and success rate up to what, what is uh, the, the standard, then we'll be able to, like, uh, you know, help control, control TB. And so that's, that's just uh, for the three years. But our, our funding for the next four or five years is about 407 million uh, kina. Uh, and that's that's the funding that that we are uh, advocating uh, for the government to continue to increase uh, its funding. But our partners are also helping support us to do that. So we we still ha don't have any lab that that uh, um, does culture. You know, so we we, we are working too hard toward that. Hopefully, by by the uh, before the end of this year, we should have a culture lab. But all our uh, culture specimens, we, we have a linkage with, with the uh, Queensland uh, lab, reference lab there, and, and that's why Queensland, Queensland uh, in Brisbane. Uh, and that's why I was saying that regional, you know, um, initiatives or regional uh, responses are very, very important and, and very necessary because in our setting where those capacity issues are, that's necessary, and that's where l most of our lab uh, requirements have gone. But we do have uh, gene experts now uh, spread out throughout the country, almost in all provinces of the country, so we can be able to like detect or, or, or you know like uh, help help diagnose. So uh, almost all provinces have. Yes, yes. Uh, now, like I said, the lab capacity to to do the cultures should be available by the end of this year. But that's, that may not uh, fulfill the, the whole requirements for the country. So we, we again will uh, uh, have in strategy and plan to, to expand and increase uh, our, our strength in, in that particular area. But that's still a challenge. Right. Mm. And uh, uh, for how long have previous PNG been using gene expert machine? Uh, this would be probably about two or so years. Two yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So has it led to uh, Detection of, uh, MDR oh yeah, detection. oh yes, yes. We have probably about 600 or so, you know, multi-drug resistant TB patients, uh, and uh, um, you know, spread out throughout the parts of the country, but mostly in Port Mosby and and also in Western Province, you know, where we have a big number, but also in Morobe and some of the bigger cities. And, uh, yeah. Uh, migration, in terms of uh, internal migration, uh, people moving from one, you know, part of the country to another, that is uh, one that's happening, and especially urban migration uh, from the rural setting to the urban settings. Uh, and unfortunately, when they, when people move there, then accommodation and, and where they live becomes an issue, and a lot of times they end up in the settlements or squatters. So it, it, it's it's one of those. Uh, areas where we, we have to also look at that very carefully. Um, but migration in terms of country to country on our border sites, especially with, with the, um, the Torres Strait and, and um, PNG border, we, we've been able to manage that much better than we were before. You know, so our side of the, uh, our, our country and the Australian side have now better dialogue and, and we have protocols that we built up so that we are able to manage that. Yeah, some sort of screening happens, but, but more so in terms of trying to um, like get patients to, to come back to our side of the country, those who are from Papua New Guinea. Uh, and our services have also been improving, where we had a, a problem with our hospital, uh, the hospital that caters for the border. Um, citizens now that's that's been upscaled and improved so within a few years um, when we build the infrastructure and, and get the 
a workforce there, we, we should be able to manage you know, our, our border well. But it's always been a challenge, um, especially in border areas, not just uh, this particular border, but uh, even the province too, province border, they, they, are, they are in the most peripheral setting and, and access and equity is an issue and so we need to work hard to reach them. Yeah, the, the, the other big um, risk is of course HIV AIDS uh, or HIV. So the core mobility or core infection is, is one that's also high because we have a very high uh, TB um, uh, challenge and burden as well. Um, although our, our epidemic is, is a concentrated one, the, the numbers are still you know, very high and, and uh, this is the most vulnerable ones, the, the HIV TB, uh, that, that I think we haven't really uh, got to deal with well um, and that's one area that we are taking serious as well in the, in the strategy that we have yeah, yeah it, it is um, in, in the um, certain pockets especially in the in the urban settings there's there's groups of people who are who are like more prone to diabetes and, and amongst them they do have uh, uh, the TB problem um, but that's one that that we are uh, we have to also explore and, and try to, to cater for them.